All right, so, so the last topic we'll cover is uh, fatigue. So this can be a fairly important uh, consideration, particularly given the, uh, the nature of the, uh, the loadings in the form of the SAE car. So a lot of them are, uh, well, they're basically repeated loads. So as you go around the track, your uh, parts of your, your race car are going to see the same sorts of loads repeated over and, uh, and over again. So, um, so we'll sort of discuss what fatigue is and then what inputs you need to do a fatigue analysis and then also how we do a fatigue analysis in answers with a, uh, with a demonstration. So, so fatigue is basically, it comes about due to repetitive, uh, repetitive loading. So most of the time your loads are what are referred to as, um, well some of the time I should say, as constant amplitude loading. So you have, you just grab a pen of a different colour. So your load basically cycles from positive to negative. Okay, so if I don't go from green, this is basically going from plus one to minus one. So you might have another load, so I'm just going to use a different colour now, that goes from let's say zero to one. So this is just a scale factor of your load. Okay, so it goes from zero to one, or you might have another one that goes from say uh, minus 0.5 to 1.5. Okay, but in in any case, the load basically uh, changes, not so much changes sign, but it changes uh, changes direction. So, another type of loading which is uh, more common is a, a sort of where you've got a, a load history. So there's a, a trace. So there's no real um, sine wave or square wave or uh, or triangle wave in there. This can be a mixture of a whole different, um, a whole series of different amplitudes all, um, all combined into the one. So this might be coming from um, from driving over a uh, driving over a rough uh, a rough road. So uh, there's different ways of dealing with these different uh, different loading uh, loading types. So if we look at the, um, so for fatigue, there's certain stress definitions we have to, uh, we have to take into account. So if we look at the case of um, where we've got a constant amplitude, so where we don't have that, uh, but that load history where it's just, uh, let's just treat it as a, as a sine wave. So you have uh, your maximum and minimum, uh, minimum stress. So the range that the stress goes through is basically the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So there'll be some sort of average stress, so if I draw a line through the middle here, which is basically the max plus the min divided by, uh, divided by 2. And then the, uh, the amplitude, so that's either side of that mean line, is basically the, uh, the stress amplitude divided by uh, by two, so that's the alternating uh, stress. And then the, the ratio, so this is the way we characterize our, um, our load, our loading by the, uh, by the ratio. So this is the stress ratio. So normally your stresses will cycle the, the same sort of way as your, uh, as your loads do. If we're talking about a, um, a load that's sort of quasi-static. So uh, so if you have fully reversed loading, so you basically have a mean stress of zero because the um, the max and min are simply uh, simply reversed, and then your your ratio is uh, minus one because the ratio is the minimum divided by the uh, the maximum. So if you have zero based loading, your um, your mean stress is basically your max stress divided by two. But the uh, the ratio is uh, is zero because your minimum is uh, is zero. So that's uh, that's how it's uh, how it's defined. So one of the most important, or one of the inputs to a, uh, a fatigue simulation, 
is a uh, what we call a stress life curve. So this is a characteristic of the material. So as you uh, uh, so simplest way to think of it, if you have a um, a, st a steel bar and then you bend it, you do a positive and minus bending it will only undergo a certain number of cycles before it uh, fails if that stress is um, significantly uh, significantly high. So with a, um, a stress life curve, so this is normally a, uh, it's normally roughly a straight line on a log log plot, a log of stress versus log of uh, number of cycles. So you can uh, read the number, the alternating stress. So when we talked about alternating stress, this is the uh, stress amplitude or alternating stress, you figure out what that stress is. So let's say for example it was uh, 5.8 E4 PSI. You read off your curve and it will tell you how many cycles before that part is likely to uh, to fail. So if you got sort of very very high stresses, your part might not last very many uh, very many cycles. So depending on how light you want to go with your designs, so again this is uh, another thing you've got to consider. If you go too light, although your part might be stiff enough and strong enough to withstand static stresses and not yield, just because a part doesn't yield, it doesn't mean it's not going to fail. So if you have a, uh, a stress above yield, it's going to fail on a static load. If you've got stresses below yield, depending on where they are on this curve, they may fail. Uh, after a certain number of uh, certain number of cycles, so generally, you uh, in uh, for most uh, sort of engineering type structures, anything above uh, say two or three million cycles is considered a, uh, an infinite life. And for most uh, metals, this curve will eventually exhibit. There'll be a point where it's sort of a straight line, and that's what we call the uh, the endurance limit. So if you have a stress below your endurance limit, no matter how many cycles you apply, it won't fail. So things like uh, aluminium generally don't tend to have an endurance limit, so no matter what your stress level is, it will eventually fail. Just a qu question of whether that eventually is uh, more cycles than your part is going to be expected to see in its, uh, in its lifetime. Okay, so uh, so where do you get this fatigue data from? So this stress life curve uh, is what we're talking about here. So uh, so a lot of uh, textbooks often have empirical data and constants that allow you to calculate uh, fatigue properties. So normally you need to make um, corrections to those based on things like surface finish, the size of the part, whether it's uh, been machined or um, if it's uh, been cast or if it's been forged and also uh, things like surface finish. Uh, so sometimes if it's a fairly exotic material you often need to um, do physical testing. So most of the time that's not going to be, or, or hopefully all of the time, that's not going to be the case for the materials you're using to uh, in your uh, Formula SAE cars. But um, in general, sort of textbooks can be a good source of that uh, information. So uh, the other option is to play it safe and stick to uh, the endurance limit as your limiting stress. But there's also, um, if you haven't got physical test data, if you haven't got uh, constants from a textbook, so just purely based off the uh, ultimate uh, stress, there's empirical ways of deriving um, your stress life curve. So um, uh, textbooks on fatigue generally will probably most likely go through that uh, that procedure. It's not very uh, not very involved. There's just a few um, a few quick calculations you do to get two points on the graph, and then you can uh, just draw a straight line between them in a log log plot, and then you can get a stress life curve. Okay, so. With a, uh, a fatigue calculation, you don't generally you don't need to solve the model again. It's uh, it's just a, a post processing step that you do. So it's like when you look at your um, equivalent uh, equivalent stress, you say, is that stress below yield? Yes, it is. My design is safe. With the fatigue uh, tool, 
this does a little bit it's a little bit more involved than that so it has to go back and look up the stress life curve and then from that it comes back and plots a contour of, uh, of life or how many cycles the part will um, will withstand. So there's other uh, other things like equivalent alternating stress, so particularly if you've got a, um, a non-zero mean stress, your uh, stress for fatigue will be different to your stress for just looking at static, um, static failure. Okay, so we'll do a, uh, a demonstration of uh, fatigue, so let me just find my model. 